Can you imagine living like this? How much do you think you'd need? 20 million? I was thinking 40. So what do you have to do to get 40 million dollars? I took a job in counterintelligence for Burke and Randall. They're about to make a move. Some new product. Something big. Uh, okay, we're talking about duplicity. Or and- are we? Duplicity. <laughs> perhaps, <laughs> perhaps it's another movie that we'll talk about instead. Are you sure this is what we're reviewing? Well, I don't like this movie. Or do I? <laughs> I don't know. I, I think I really am the only person amongst all of you who was not favorable for this film. You I, weren't favorable for this, really? Yeah. Oddly yeah. enough, uh, we, we were also the only three not checking our cell phones during the movie. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh fuck off. I was not checking my cell phone. Oh, no, you he, so he were. Wasn't, no, he wasn't no, checking Because cell- I was asleep. He was sleeping. He was yeah, asleep. exactly. I, I can, I can honestly say <laughs> I didn't have time to check my cell phone. Well, you know, no. it's a movie that like is convoluted and it's complicated and there's a point that if you haven't gotten a lot of sleep, which is Corey's M.O. <laughs> I, I can see sort of starting to f- pass out without meaning to. Uh, but that being said, a fully awake person might actually thoroughly enjoy this film. I would say a fully awake person could even love this film. In fact, I feel that this is probably the best film released in the first quarter of this year well, perhaps that we wasn't an Oscar folks, holdover. Perhaps, before praising it, we should tell the folks what this movie is about. Sure thing. And if Corey can stop <laughs> checking dials. And Here's moving. the hard part. <laughs> Someone tell no, the yeah, plot. It's, yeah, Here's, yeah, yeah, the guy who, who fell asleep during the movie. Tell everybody what okay, this movie is about. Okay, you know what? I can't tell you what this is about. We have uh, two corporate spies, people who you actually used to be former spies. Uh, I believe what, not, they're played by uh, Clive, Clive Bowen. Bowen. And Julia Roberts. And they actually used to be official government spies. Julia Roberts was for the CIA, am I correct? Right. And uh, go on Wilson because he's British. Oh, he was, he no, was, no, no, no. Owen Wilson. I mean, okay. Oh, all right. Wilson. Wilson. <laughs> I mean, uh, uh, Clive, Clive Owen was... Uh, You're going to fall asleep in the middle uh, of this review. Clive Owen was... <laughs> Clive Owen Clive was, was MI5, right? Yeah. MI6. 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 Six. Damn, I didn't even know that was MI6. That's how good he was. Yeah, MI5 MI was the old is, one. MI6 <laughs> is the CIA of Britain. MI5 is the uh, FBI. Gotcha. So yeah. now, and MI4 is the good the Home Shopping Network. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that's BBC4. No, it's, 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 it's the Hardy Boys. And, uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, and, and MI3 is just crossing guards. Yeah. <laughs> But a security guard, I was that. Right? And, was, and where am I, too? But, uh, <laughs> no, so th- now they both have lost their government positions. And I know Clive Vaughn lost his because there was some double cross when these two met each other. Uh, Julie Roberts met him, seduced him, took something from him that made him lose his government position. So now these two people, they are corporate spies. They work for two opposing corporations, pharmaceutical corporations. Are do they? Or do they? They might be working together, however, to pull off the ultimate con. And if you've seen the trailer, you know that in fact. And this you is know all that. Yes. <laughs> Not so much the ultimate con, the ultimate heist. This yes. is a heist movie. Exactly. It's about two yeah. people who have set themselves up to try to rip off one of these two corporations. And as they move along, we start to see how they're trying to play these two arch nemeses who loathe the hell out of each other. Yeah, and, and we wonder if they loathe each other. Or are they putting up a front? Are they actually being spied upon and know that and just act like they're feuding lovers? Well, when you've got a film called uh, Duplicity, there's nothing that's certain. And the movie keeps undercutting you and going, aha, we know you thought this, now, but maybe you were see, wrong. that's my problem with the movie. It's just too convoluted with this going back and forth. What is happening shit that I don't know what the fuck is going on. And I know. Now, I know I'm not stupid, all it's, right? It's and, and co- you're, you're not stupid. But the problem is every other heist movie, there's only like five cons in the world. And, and every con is based on one of these fives. So every time I see a movie, a con movie, and even every one of them, they'll have some character say like, hey, you can't believe what you see. And, and once they say that, like, oh, that's right. I have to know. I have to allow for the fact that what I'm seeing told to me, I mean, what I'm hearing being told to me or what I see is the exact opposite of what's going on. So I, now I'm at a point where I figure them out all the time. But this one and it sucks. Didn't. And this one I couldn't. No. no th- this is a really, really smart film. It's, it's written and directed by a great guy, the guy who did Michael Clayton. Tony, right. Ke- Tony, Gilroy. Tony Gilroy. And this was a great exercise in screenwriting. He wanted to, to, to write this really tight heist film, but he did something really cool in it where he took the same speech and ran through it, I think, five times, but every time it meant something else. And it started at the very beginning of the film in our opening scene, and then we see that scene play out several other times. How do I know you? How do you know me? Wow. That's tough. That's a strong play. Believe me, I've spent a lot of time thinking what this would be like. 
where we'd be, what I'd say, what you'd say, but I, I never thought that you'd... I'm terribly sorry. You really want to go this way? You clearly have me confused with someone else. I don't know. I mean, I'm not great on names. I should be. I try. Faces, I'm definitely better. Faces, I'm like a B, B minus. Where I'm good, where I really excel, people I've slept with. That's been a traditional area of strength for me. Uh, look, seriously, I don't know who you think I am, but... You charm me, seduce me, screw me, then you drug me and ransack my hotel room. And how sick is this? You know, the last thing I remember before I passed out was how much I liked you. It's so smart and it's so sharp that you're laughing the whole time, but at the same time, it's keeping you surprised left and right with genuine, actual surprises, never a cheap trick. It's not the smarts that is the real pleasure of this film, though, although I, th I believe on subsequent viewings it will be. But it was just the charm, the chemistry between, between Owen Wilson <laughs> and Fuck Julia. You, man. Julia you, know, shut up. you know what? He was halfway through the movie. Corey's like, man, this is all right, but I don't understand what all that bit was with the penguin wearing underwear and all those guys yeah. who were like, who were like drinking syrup. What was all that about? Yeah. Who is this? Like, Owen Wilson and Julia Louise Dreyfus. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it's. Y'all know I ain't good at names, all right? Fuck y'all. I got a problem, okay? I think okay? Beneflex shows up at one point. <laughs> I got a problem. He's cleaning up his drool off his theater seat trying to explain this to me. <laughs> and he's checking my messages. <laughs> That's right. Oh, who did I sleep through? Kent, Kent, Kent. <laughs> Ghost Rider Kent. It's like, oh, man, there's still people talking. I didn't miss anything. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They haven't gotten to the action scene yet. That hey, would have woken me up. You know up. what? I, I'm going I'm to defend my man here because I can see where you're coming from. Because okay, there's a joke coming here, but go ahead. That's not a joke. Okay. That was me you. saying, like, in the middle of it, I felt kind of sleep, a little bit sleepy myself. And, um, and I was very confused. I mean, I was, but I was willing to stick with it, and I was glad. I feel like I got a good payoff. But I can totally see how if you are the kind of like, I'm not saying you're short attention span, but there's a lot of people out there who have short attention spans, and they admit it. They're almost proud of it. And if this is you, this won't be a movie for you. Motherfucker, you just, this shot of, of saying, I need Ritalin. <laughs> no. Yeah, well, you, we started I, I, I with see. saying you admittedly don't get much sleep. And this is not a film for someone who's slept for like four hours. Yeah, or it's, or it's, who it's, it's has, not. you know, an attention span. I mean, I can, the thing is, uh, yeah. everybody's used to movies really spoon feeding them what's going on. Either, it, either it's telling them exactly what's going on or right before the big wrap up, there's a character who, who comes on and says like, well, wait a minute. What's been going on? And somebody lays it all out for yeah. you. No. And this isn't a movie that okay. does that. This it is, asks you this to is work for people a little who bit. Like, if, you, if you're a, a person who likes to watch Lost, yeah. this will appeal to you. Because it's like I second. like Lost. You, but you, you don't keep up with Lost. When was the last, the last time, time you, you watched, watched Lost? <laughs> uh -oh. Okay, question. Do you know what's in the hatch? Yeah. Do what? you know who the others are? Yeah. No, you don't. No, you don't. don't. Look don't at him. Know. He has no clue. <laughs> yeah. No. You didn't get past season two, motherfucker. <laughs> I, what happens I, I to have, Libby? Uh, what she, happens to her? She dies. Oh, uh, oh, what yeah, happens to yeah, her? Yeah, because that's, that's <laughs> a rare thing. Oh, right. Hey, hey, let dies. me tell you something. Well, I, I spent money on season one and two, so fuck y'all. So, I, I, I can hey, understand You plots. didn't spend money. I bought you season one. <laughs> but Actually, anyway, that, but anyway, back to duplicity. Yeah. Yeah. But you know something? No, you're right. I will tell you... Uh, I don't, I, can, I don't think they delivered well the story that they tried to present. I would just say that. Now, I know I'm outnumbered. Everybody here liked this movie, and I didn't. But I just thought that the, that story was way too complicated and, and a little convoluted, and they tried to fit too much in because I did like the relationship between Clive Owen and Julia Roberts. I thought that that was pretty cute. I mean, and took, funny. And, no, and it was very funny. I like watching those two together. Great chemistry uh, well, that it, they It's have. funny because I, like Julia Roberts to me was always for so long with somebody like, yeah, she's out there. She's another Meg Ryan slash Sandra Bullock. But as she's gotten older, not only do I think she's hotter than she was before, but she's really good about picking good projects. Like she, she'll go years without working, but when she does pick a movie, with the exceptions of Ocean's Twelve, um, she really knows what she's doing. I don't want to hear you talk about me like an older woman again. We got another one right here. Hey, man, I, I ain't gonna. Hey, you know what? It. It's okay once in a blue moon to say, you know what? I gotta say, Julia Roberts is aging real well because she is. She's yes, still she fine is. woman. But you say day. it about every woman who's got. Yeah, great you're cubes. like Diane Keaton or whoever <laughs> like a, it is. You're like the Where's the Beef lady. You're like, <laughs> yeah, the, yeah, I'll <laughs> show you where the it, beef is. You know, so if, 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 if the Oscars, you're like, ah, Sophia Loren looks like an old Italian prune. 
but I'd still fuck her. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, if the shit is dangling out and covered in gray pubes, you're all over it. Yeah, he's I, all hey, at ggilf.com. I'm, uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm a fair man who likes to show women love. Okay? But the, okay. you know what? I, I really, I just love the hell out of this movie. I absolutely adore it. I think the final line of Julia Roberts and Clive Owen is just one of my best end movie lines that I've heard in quite some time. It just so beautifully summed up what we had just watched that everything just works so great. And and then when you find out everything that's going on, it's just so fucking cool. And ultimately the speech that was made earlier ties together with the end. And then everything comes together in this, just this beautiful way of, all being woven perfectly. Well, I, will, I will agree with you here that this, uh, now we're talking about Clive Owen and Julia Roberts, but this movie has two additional people that pretty much make this a, a rounded off, well cast film. We have Paul Giamatti and uh, Tom Wilkinson. Who yeah. are and, both awesome. And yeah. man, they got a, they, they got a sequence at the beginning of this movie that I love. Now, <laughs> yeah. so you're thinking I didn't pay attention, but the, they, there's a slow-mo sequence at the beginning where those two are arguing with each other. You don't hear any words. There's just music playing. And then we got two old white men just wrestling each other Have to the ground. Slap fight. You know, it yeah. was it was it was great. It was like Zack Snyder had come in and they didn't let him like fast forward at all. It was like <laughs> yeah, yeah. trust me. No. Actually, that is I've got to say that opening sequence is just one of the most brilliant opening yeah. sequences we've seen in a long time because it's so simple it's so subtle it's very inspired, but it's though. so it's so inspired yeah, and, and it, it's a building laugh as yes. it goes along you're it just laughing more and more and but funnier i'm laughing at Corey, just going y'all think i wasn't paying attention but when this movie first started <laughs> i know what was happening <laughs> and i took my nap i saw one of the best sequences in that movie <laughs> it's like, anybody can still wait through the opening asshole it's like oh this is this movie's gonna be good oh wait they're just talking <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, look, I'm I, I'm I, I'm in the position right now where I say it is something that just did not appeal to me. But I do appreciate the the good qualities of this film. I think it is my myself. I think it is a victim of being overwritten. But uh, apparently, I'm in the minority in this particular group right here. And and you are the minority in this group because you're the only one to fall asleep. No, oh, no, 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 I, I tell you, no, no. I, I kind of doze a little bit myself. I, I'll be honest. About it, even though I love the movie, I mean, it, it totally won me back. It, in the uh, middle, I do, I do think it slows down just a little bit too much. No, there is a point in the middle where you just don't know what's happening. It's so it, it is confusing to the point where you're like, I hope that this is going to fix this, and it can even Ozymandias himself would go yes. like, I don't understand what's going <laughs> but on, but it does fix it, and it does come around. And best of all, for for a heist slash con film, you don't feel cheated at the end, and a lot of those you do when it does yes, the big reveal. Yeah, yeah. And this one you yeah. don't. It feels organic, and it really works. And see, what I'm getting from this is a lot of this movie relies on character. Uh, mainly, the the weight of this movie is on the shoulders of Clive Owen and Julia Roberts. Oh and yeah, if you, and if you buy those two through the whole film, and you love you love them that much, this film works for you because even you said the in the exchange between those two is what really tied it up for oh, you. Oh yeah, uh, that was not enough for me. And but I hey look I I enjoyed it I, I okay y'all gonna hate me but I give it a rental no see I I can't believe you give it a rental I mean because to me it's one of those movies that wait for me personally it's a full price. But I can allow for points of view like yours that I think will be, you know, fairly numerous or, or like halfway there. So I'm going to say a high rental. Okay. Oh, really? really? Uh, really? Mean, sorry, no, no. High, high no, matinee. No, you said it already. No, no, you no, said no, it. You, take it you take that back. That's you take, on your mind. No, no, no. High matinee. I'm sorry. I did not mean high rental. Well, you I mean know, Corey, matinee. while oh, I pre- I, while I appreciate this isn't as good a film as Race to Which Mountain, which you gave a matinee to. Don't I even do that shit, man. We get Race. <laughs> man, what those movies are about. Fuck you, man. You know what you're doing. I know exactly what I'm doing. <laughs> no, this is a full price movie for me. I agree with Carlisle. This is one of the best movies of the first quarter of this year, and I can hardly wait to get it on DVD and watch it again. Yeah, this is, this is absolutely a full price film. It is the best thing that I've seen that wasn't an Oscar movie from this year. You must go out and check out this movie if you like smartly written in films, especially heist movies. If you're a heist movie fan, this is the best heist movie since Ocean's Eleven. I mean, it, it is. I, I won't disagree with you guys at all. It's just that there's so many people who like see movies and they go like, I didn't understand. Like Every time somebody came to me and said like, yeah, GoldenEye was too complicated. I didn't understand the plot <laughs> to that. I'm like, oh, fuck. Thanks what? to you, we got two really stupid James Bond movies right after yes. this. You know what? And, and those people tend not to agree with me. So. <laughs> yeah, you Man, can't... you're stupid. That movie was awful. You can't review something for everyone because when you look at the the numbers on say disaster movie <laughs> how many I people know, that's true. not what only went to go see disaster it, movie but disaster fucking movie. bought it 
No Wait disaster minute. movie bombed. Did it? Okay. Yeah. Well, I heard it no, made decent meet money. The Spartans. Meet, meet the, the Spartans. Spartans made, made a lot money. of money. Okay. Yeah. Well, okay. Well, let me just wrap this up. I, I must wrap this gave, up, motherfucker. I, I gave it a matinee. Uh, we got two. No, you gave, a, you gave it a rental. Oh, did, did I? Okay. Yeah. I must fall but, asleep. But now we're up to yeah, you. Fell asleep in <laughs> your own review. <laughs> I gave it a rental. Oh, oh, it was a matinee movie. It was fantastic. Oh, for the parts he was awake for, it was a matinee. Everything else was a rental. Oh, we still talking about which round, right? Yeah. The review was okay, but I felt like the chemistry between Carlisle and Cyrus was good. But everybody kept talking. Talking too much. I, know, man. <laughs> the, the I really like the relationship between you two guys, but the but the situation between you two is way too overwritten. No. No, I gave it a rental. You guys gave it full price. Not like we ever and, write and, anything before we and, say it. And Leon's true subconscious gave it a rental. I, I gave it a name. matinee, yeah, okay. <laughs> no, no, I, and a high matinee at that. Do you have any idea how far my ass was hanging out because of you? If I told you I loved you, would it make any difference? If you told me, or if I believed you. 